Good morning and welcome to St. Columba Gala Church. <clears throat> it's the summer holiday season just now and that's very obvious from today's attendance, but I'm sure we'll make up for the lack of numbers with the quality. We're going to sing hymn 140, The Lord Doth Reign and Clothed Sea. Myself, I chose the music. This is part of the program that we run through, and the first hymn is usually a psalm, which it was, but you would have noticed that the music didn't quite seem to fit in. However, we are where we are. I, there are no young children, I would think, in the church, so I, we will not have a children's address for young people. I, I will just move on to the second hymn. I, I'll make the announcements, I think, probably just now as well. The announcements are in the pew leaflet. I, Graham Morrison, our locum, is away. I, he was carrying out a wedding yesterday. Uh, he's a busy man and he's not here today, so Angus and I are taking services. Um, and all the, as I say, the announcements are on the pew leaflet. Uh, if anybody can give me some funny stories for the back page, uh, you might be able to beat what I've got there. Um, I can say that Thursday afternoon, when we had we were open to the public, we had people from all over the world. Quite an incredible selection. Uh, I thought some of them might just have been still in Glasgow today, but they weren't, they weren't very sure. Uh, sometimes people come on Sunday after they've been in on Thursday. The second hymn is hymn 36, The Lord is King, lift up thy voice.
first reading today is taken from Mark chapter 1, verse 1 to 20. You'll find it on Pew Leaflet 1002. In the beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Georgian countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. They were confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locust and wild honey and this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I. The thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I will baptise you with water but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love, and you, I, am well pleased. But once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus says, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat. They were preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father in the boat with the hired men, and they followed him. Amen. So we draw our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we forget just how lucky we are living in the country that we live in, in the city that we live in, and in the circumstances that we have. Help us never to forget those who are less fortunate than us. Today we would pray for the sick and the lonely and the bereaved. Bring your comfort to them. We pray for the homeless and for the work done for them by the Church of Scotland through various routes, including Crossreach, Street Pastors, and others. We pray for all in authority. Queen, British Government, the Scottish Government, local authorities, and yes, the European Parliament. We pray for all those who help our people, doctors, nurses, police, fire, and all who commit to help others. People who carry on the services while we sleep, electricity, gas, streets, water, in our denomination, we pray for the work of evangelism that takes all of us out to those who would not usually think of the church 
as important. Help us always to show the love that Christ showed us. So we pray for the work carried out by the Lodging House Mission, by the Well and by St Francis in East, all supported by Glasgow Presbytery. We pray for the Presbytery, for the moderator, for all the committees, for the clerk. We pray for the moderator of the General Assembly. <clears throat> in our own congregation, we ask for your continued presence with us, as you have been since 1770. Yesterday, today, forever. Bless the members and adherents, the interim moderator, the Reverend Melvin Wood, our locum, Graham Morrison, the Kirk Session, the board, and the other organisations, and particularly today as they're on holiday, the Sunday School. We remember today those congregations who have joined us in vacancy, congregations without a minister. We pray that you will raise up men and women as ministers of the gospel to take the church forward. Especially today we would remember Brother Blin Old, who inducted their new minister on Thursday, a church which was threatened with closure but is no longer and has a full charge. We pray that you will be with us and that you will look after the congregation here in a similar fashion in your own good time. All these things we would ask in the name of our Lord and we draw them together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The next hymn is hymn 78, Jesus Lover of My Soul, hymn 78.
The second reading is a continuation of the first one, Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 21 to the end of the chapter. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at this teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an evil spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and, de and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a sol solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he travelled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. <clears throat> Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. Amen, and may God add his blessing to these readings from his word. Thank you to Kath Robertson and Archie Fraser for today's readings and once again quality rather than quantity is a cry in this congregation. We're going to move on now and, and uplift the offering.
may bring to you an offering which is but a token of what you have done for us. We give thanks and we pray that in the future we will live up to the high standards of the past. Amen. It was remiss of me earlier on not to welcome any visitors, but we have a very special visitor today. Uh, we have Reza's mum, uh, who's come up from darkest England to, to support Reza now. The good news is Reza graduated during the week, uh, and I think that we should give him a round of applause. So we'll be expecting even better playing from now on. Uh, we're going to sing him 494, Thou Whose Almighty Word, a bit better known than the last one, 494, Thou Whose Almighty Word. should have said that uh, Reza graduated from the conservatoire uh, during the week. Not everyone maybe knows that he's at the con conservatoire. Um, so. I want to start today in Mark's Gospel as the two readings gave us the actual words. Mark's Gospel is full of life and action. It's something that we covered in our Bible study some time ago. It's the Gospel which is most active and demonstrates the timing of when it was written. Mark concentrates on the marvellous things that Jesus did and the places he went to. Mark's Gospel is the shortest of the Gospels and it was probably the first that was written. The calculations from the scholars are that it was written between 65 and 70 AD, which is not that terribly long after Jesus walked on the earth. They say 65 to 70 or even earlier. There is a strong early tradition that John Mark 
wrote it in Rome, setting down Jesus' story as he had heard it direct from the Apostle Peter. So not too many intermediary steps from Peter first hand. This would certainly account for the Gospel's vividness. Mark often explained Jewish customs, so he obviously had non-Jewish readers in mind. Now, interestingly, the name John Mark occurs often in Acts and the Epistles. John is the Jewish name and Mark is the Latin name. And his mother, as often with families, was the main person in the family who had this church connection. Her house in Jerusalem was used by the early church. It's listed in Acts chapter 12, verse 12. And John Mark was also cousin to Paul's companion Barnabas. Mark travelled with Paul but later became Peter's companion and just like a son to him. So that kind of sets the scene. On to Mark's Gospel as we read today. In writing his Gospel, Mark passes over Jesus' birth. For him the good news begins with John, the voice Isaiah had predicted, crying out from the desert, urging the nation to make ready for God's coming. The rest of his account shows that Jesus is the Messiah, the one whose coming John announced, the Son of God. The prophet in the desert or wilderness, John was certainly recognised instantly as a prophet. He not only looked the part, he possessed the prophet's cast iron assurance that he had a God-given message to proclaim in a long line of prophets. And of course he baptised Jesus in the Jordan. But while John lived life in the desert, Jesus chose to be in the thick of things in Galilee, which at the time was one of the busiest, most cosmopolitan regions of Palestine. After John was put in prison, Jesus started his ministry by proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe. Repent and believe the good news. Then Jesus called his first disciples, all of them fishermen. From then on, Capernaum became Jesus' base. His teaching in the synagogue and his handling of the possessed man both convey special authority. Again and again, Mark stresses Jesus' insistence on secrecy. Might be a surprise, you might think that someone coming to start something new would want everyone to know and everyone to talk about it. Particularly in the day that we live in where instant news covers everything. But Jesus recognised the people were expecting the Messiah to be a political leader. News of Jesus' amazing powers which marked him out as the Messiah could easily have sparked off a rising against the Roman occupation. That would have been no use to anyone, so Jesus played things down. It was imperative that the miracle should be accompanied by teaching to explain the kind of kingdom Jesus was bringing, not a political takeover, but to explain his real mission. So the first chapter of Mark can be split in three parts. Number one, the baptism and temptation of Jesus. Number two, the calling of the first disciples. Number three, the healing of many. And those of us with a Church of Scotland background will recognise this is very common in the Church of Scotland. One, two, three. 
The baptism is important. And it's important today as well. It's an area of Christianity that has challenged the church. Our belief is that by, by being baptised, Jesus gave it authority. And therefore, it is a sacrament. Just like communion, which he also, also authorised by saying, this do remembrance of me. And of course, as you know, the Church of Scotland only has two sacraments, baptism and communion, because these have special authority from Jesus. So when a believer is baptised, they are proclaiming that they are a new person. They've confessed and their belief in Jesus with a new life in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Church of Scotland also believes that infants should be baptised and that their parents or guardians should take the vows to bring up the child in the nurture of the Lord. Other churches believe that only adults can be baptised and some, notably the Baptists, believe in full immersion. These are differences which have come down over centuries between churches. Secondly, he called his disciples. Calling fishermen as his first disciples was an effective way of connecting with the people. Many would be fishermen around the Sea of Galilee. It is notable that when Jesus said to Simon and Andrew, Come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. It says there, we read earlier on, at once they left their nets and followed him. They didn't hang around immediately. Similarly, James and John left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men. Instantly, when Jesus asked, they followed him. And thirdly, the healing of many and the casting out of demons. Jesus would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Simon's mother-in-law had a fever. Jesus took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her. Jesus went early in the morning to pray and the disciples looked for him. When they found him, he said, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he travelled through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. As we read, a man with leprosy came to Jesus and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, if you are willing, you can make me clean. It tells you there that filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. Now, of course, in today's world, we recognize touching a man with leprosy questionable, something that the people round about would have been shocked. And even today, people would have reservations. But Jesus touched him. I am willing, be clean, said Jesus. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent the man away with a strong warning not to tell anyone, again playing down the situation, but not to forget to show himself to the priest and to offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded as a testament of his cleanness or of his cleansing. But human nature being as it is, this man was so delighted to have been cured. He rushed off and he spread the good news. He told everyone about Jesus curing him. And as a result, Jesus became even more notable. He could no longer enter a town openly 
but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet, as we read, the people still came to him from everywhere. It's interesting stories. Beginning of Mark, a very accessible gospel. If you're going to read a gospel, read Mark. It's very, very accessible. And you can see there the urgency and the immediacy of the reporting. But here we are, 2,000 years later, and Jesus still calls us to be baptised or to live out the vows taken by our parents for us, to put behind us our former self and to be a new person. Jesus calls us to follow him. Are we willing to immediately do this? Right now, not after thinking about it, or attending classes or courses, but to take him at his word. The word brought to us in the Bible, do we have the faith that the man with leprosy had? Do we believe that Jesus can heal us, whatever is wrong with us? Are we prepared to put our faith in Jesus? For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. What a promise. Amen. We're going to finish today with hymn 405, All My Hope on God is Founded, 405.
Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Thank you.